slowly rotating at the edge of deep space, 1,000 kilometers beyond the atmosphere of 21st century Earth, is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Starlab. Here, Starlab Research Director, Maura Cassidy, along with scientists and technicians of the International Space Authority, watch over the countless suns, planets, and star systems that fill the universe. This week, space exploration team captains John Graydon and Buddy Griff experience the dislocating shock of time clash and discover how suddenly the here and now can be transformed into the now and then on Alien Worlds. <laughs> Correct your approach vector, Captain. You're 19 degrees off course. Uh, all right. I'll see what I can do. Don't just see what you can do, Captain. Make a decision. You're running out of time. What's going on, Jerry? We've got a problem, Mora. If that petroleum tanker on screen six doesn't correct its approach vector, it won't clear the docking bay. How's that, Star Lab? Any better? Pandora, you're still 14 degrees off course. Abort your approach. Return to your original position and stand by for new docking coordinates. Uh, Roger. Why are you guiding him in, Jerry? Is there something wrong with their navigational computer? It blew a decoder module five minutes into the approach. And that guy is the worst pilot I've uh, ever... There's no way we can abort our approach, Star Lab. We've got a retro malfunction. Hit the collision alert, Mora. Attention, docking bay seven. This is an emergency alert. All personnel, please clear the area. Repeat, clear the area. Docking officer Clark, contact the bridge. Jerry, it's Bill Clark. Any chance he might make it? Not unless you believe in miracles. Okay, Bill, get out of there. computer and retro system had been serviced in over two years and the crew couldn't get out because the explosive bolts on the emergency hatch malfunctioned. If our EFC crew hadn't put out the fire so fast, everyone aboard the Pandora would have burned alive. Commissioner, when is the Zeon Corporation going to forget about petroleum and wake up to the fact that this is the 21st century? They can't afford to wake up, Mora. Their 20th century petroleum investments still account for 60% of their assets profit on that petroleum is by selling it on Stella Vista. But Zeon owns Stella Vista. What are they doing, selling it to themselves? No, they're selling it to the independent mining companies out there. Zeon has it all figured out, Mora. If a company wants to lease mineral rights on Stella Vista, they can do it, but only if they agree to use obsolete fossil fuel equipment. This way, Zeon not only makes money on their mineral leases, but they have a captive market for their petroleum. Well, if that isn't extortion, I don't know what is. Ethically, it is extortion, Mora. Legally, it's known as taking care of business. The good news is, is that Zeon will have to keep its tanker fleet grounded until we finish our investigation of what happened today. Don't worry. Zeon won't be putting up any more tankers like the Pandora. Do you know about the original Pandora, Commissioner? The one in Greek mythology? I believe Pandora was sent to Earth to punish mankind. I don't remember why. 
why, but I do remember she had some kind of magic box. The Fire of Heaven, Commissioner. She was sent to punish mankind for accepting the Fire of Heaven from Prometheus. And when she opened that box, she released an eternity of human suffering. You know, I thought about that today when the Pandora split open in the docking bay. What happened was so ugly and terrifying. For a split second, I saw everything mankind had suffered during the last century. All because the oil of the earth, like the fire of heaven, had been used to make people small instead of great. Eighteen hours after the oil tanker Pandora has split open and exploded in Docking Bay 7, an ISA disaster investigation team and a Xeon Corporation space tug arrive at Star Lab from Earth. Ten hours later, the crew of the Pandora is taken to the nearby Stargazer security station for interrogation. And as the Xeon Corporation tug prepares to tow the burned-out hull of the Pandora back to Earth, Star Lab scientists, technicians, and space exploration team officers begin a new day. Skipper, when we get to Valaria this afternoon, let's ask their science master, uh, what's his name again? Galen Virago. Yeah. Let's ask Galen Virago if we can go for a spin in that time machine of his. Oh, I don't think so, buddy. Where would you go if you could take a ride in it? I'd like to go back to 1939 and have Lamont Cranston teach me how to cloud men's minds. Lamont Cranston? Yeah, the shadow. He knew what evil lurked in the hearts of men. And how did he know that? When he clouded their minds, they told him the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I see. Uh... And what exactly would you do if you had the power to cloud men's minds? I'd use it to cloud women's minds. <laughs> Sexist pill. Oink, 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 oink. Good morning, Captain Graydon. Captain Grid. Uh, yeah, good morning, Cindy. Uh, Cindy, have you had your mind clouded lately? No. Not since I read Six Characters in Search of an Author. What's that, Cindy, a novel? It's a play. Luigi Pirandello, 1921. The characters in the play are rehearsing the play when six other people show up, claiming to be characters the author left out of the play when he wrote it. Uh, were any of the people who showed up named Lamont Cranston by any chance? <laughs> no, Captain, not even by any chance. Now, how about breakfast? You ready to order? Uh, can you give us a few more minutes, Cindy? We're waiting for Dr. Cassidy and Commissioner White. Okay. Gee, I wonder what's keeping Mara. I don't know. Maybe Commissioner White's shuttle was late. Yeah, that tanker accident is really... Oh, here she comes now. Morning, John. Buddy. Hello, Maura. Hi. Where's Commissioner White? He spent most of the night with the ISA Legal Bureau, drafting the order to ground Zeon's tanker fleet. He's going to deliver it this afternoon, so he suggested we go on to Valaria without him. Well, does that mean he's going to miss the time machine demonstration? Just the parallel dimension drone pod playback which I'm sure Galen will be happy to repeat. The commissioner said he'd be here tomorrow morning around 10, so when he arrives, you two can warp back here in the Solaris, pick him up, and warp back to Valari again, okay? Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay. Let me see that menu, buddy. I'm starving. Here you go. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh, those Neo cheese grapes look delicious, don't they? Cheese. Mm. You know, that reminds me of a story. Oh, dear. There was this guy who had a mouse in his house. So he went out and bought a mouse trap. But when he got it home, he noticed he was out of cheese. You know what he used for bait? Mm. A picture of some cheese. And you know what he found in the trap the next morning? Do tell. A picture of a mouse. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Valaria... Science master Galen Virago and his apprentice Marika Zarnos enter the chronology pavilion of Valaria's Magnitude 5 research complex. Standing in the center of the pavilion, illuminated by the cool white light of 200 free floating micro lamps, is the experimental time machine. A large 20 sided chamber made of semi opaque metal. 
suspended above the chamber is the penetrator capsule, a teardrop-shaped pod made of bright, seamless metal, which Galen and Marika have used to record fragments of the Earth's past. Marika, I want to conduct one last test before Dr. Cassidy arrives. Lower the pod into the chamber. Are the chamber seals secure? Yes, Galen. The REM scale indicators read zero point blue. Rotate the chamber until its decoders interlock with the pod's Yerushalim data. Yerushalim interlock. Confirmed. Interface the decoder lenses with day 12, month 4, AD 33, Earth. Decoder lenses stable at subcycle 9 point yellow. Focus them on the subspan 303 and isolate the dimension. Dimensional isolation confirmed. I have the execution site on the screen. Is the deciphering terminal translating into anglophonic? Yes. Cross-link the audio sensors. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is finished. you, Maura. Fine, buddy. Fine, buddy. Fine, John. Fine, John. Uh, what's the problem, Maura? I still have double vision from the warp through. Oh, so do we, Maura. Terrific. So, here we are. Six characters in search of Valaria. Oh, speaking of Valaria, there it is. Screen nine, Skip. Solaris to Valaria Com Center. We're tracking you, Solaris. Reduce speed to 1,200 kilometers per hour and maintain present course for three minutes, 16 seconds. At zero plus 316, terminate your engines and lock your controls. One of our pilot drones will guide you down. Roger. Uh, take it down to 1,200 kph, buddy. first got here. You know, I really don't think I could have made it through the day. They all just stood there and watched him die. Someday you must tell me about that holy man and why he was submitted to such torture and pain. We will, Galen. May I be permitted to say something about the three of you? Of course. The way you've reacted to the tragic events of your planet's past leads me to believe that if the Earth had always been inhabited by spirits like yours, much of what we've seen here today would never have happened. Sixteen hours later, as Valaria's twin suns tint the morning sky a pale, crystalline yellow, the Valarian Comm Center receives a transmission from Star Lab. Please inform Dr. Cassidy that Commissioner White has arrived and that he'll meet Captain Graydon and Captain Griff in docking bay 31. Half an hour later, Buddy and John board the Solaris, and as Mora and Galen watch from the Valaria Tracking Center, the sleek white SET interceptor blasts off for Star Lab.
warp through, Mora. Can you still see us? Affirmative, John. The resolution on this screen is so good, I can practically see into the cockpit. Uh, how many fingers am I holding up, Mora? Uh, 13. Okay, Skipper, <laughs> she really can see into the cockpit. All right, here we go. Warp through in five seconds. Mora, it's all turning inside out. Mora! John! Buddy! Galen, what's happening? Just a moment. Just a moment. The Parsec device. The Parsec device aboard the Solaris has experienced a primary decoder malfunction. The ship is passing through the time-space continuum in reverse. Galen, the ship's back on the screen. John, buddy, do you read me? Yes, Ma. I read you. John? During a routine time-space continuum warp-through, John and Buddy are sent 30 years into the past when the Starsmith Parsec Accelerator aboard the Solaris malfunctions. Mora, it's all turning inside out. And when the Solaris finally emerges from its dimensional inversion... Mara, help us. we become children. Science master Galen Virago immediately orders the launch of a pilot drone, which locks onto the Solaris and returns it to Valaria. Two hours later, Buddy and John are once again standing before the Valarian time chamber. Well, Buddy. Looks like you're gonna get that right after all. Yeah. Uh, you will be joining me, of course. Naturally. It isn't every day that we get a chance to ride the whirlwind. The whirlwind? It's part of a verse by an 18th century English writer named Joseph Addison. My mother used to read his poems to me. How does the rest of the verse go? Let me see. And please the Almighty's orders to perform. Rides in the whirlwind and directs the storm. Kind of sums up our situation, doesn't it? It sure does. Galen, are you absolutely certain there's no danger? They won't be harmed, Mora. Marika has transported me into Valaria's past many times. You didn't indicate that in the communique you sent to Commissioner White. I didn't indicate it in the communiques I transmitted to the other planets either. Why not? Marika? This is our third machine, Mora, and during its construction, we decided that the secrets of time travel would be shared only with those who understand that all life is sacred and that all living things, no matter how small, have an infinity of their own that must be respected. Those who do not understand that are the ones who will use time travel to dangerously manipulate not only their own destiny, but the destinies of others. If, during yesterday's drone pod demonstration, you and Buddy and John had reacted indifferently to the tragic events of your planet's past, we would have sent you away this morning. And if, as you went away, this accident had transformed all three of you, we would have simply closed our eyes and put you out of our minds. Then you were testing us. Time is a fragile thing, Mora, and its control can be permitted to exist only where fragile things are loved. Well, Mora, it looks like we've passed the test of time after all. Do you both still feel the same? I mean, you're not frightened or anything like that. Nothing's changed, Mora. It's like Galen said earlier. The physical organism changes during time reversal, but consciousness doesn't. It feels good to be alive inside a child's body. We're not young, we're not old, and we're not afraid. The chamber is ready, Galen. I've interfaced their time, date, and place of birth information with the alternate reality decoders, and the dimensional inversion lenses are stable at subcycle six-point violet. Buddy, John, 
go into the chamber now. Cross-link the audio sensors, Marika. John, buddy, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Do you want us to lie down on these recliners, Marika? Yes. Now, close your eyes and relax. During the reversal, you will both be transported back to the separate moments of your birth and then return to the here and now. You will be unconscious when you return and you will have no memory of what happened to you aboard the Solaris. Okay, Galen. See you later, Mara. Goodbye. See you soon. Begin the cycle, Marika. Commissioner White. John just woke up too. And Commissioner White decided to take his own ship. He'll be here in about half an hour. How do you feel? Ah, like Rip Van Winkle must have felt when he woke up. <laughs> Spaced out and hungry at a feet of kangaroo. Well, <laughs> oh, that's funny. What? What's the date today, Maura? Mm, November 14th. Why? Well, the calendar on my watch. I just noticed it. It says May 23rd. My birthday. Time Clash was written by Ron Thompson and starred Linda Gary, Chuck Olson, Bruce Philip Miller, and Corey Burton. With special guest stars Mel Wells, Eric Taslitz, Susan Silo, and Eric Green. Associate producer Ron Thompson. Music director Tom Rounds. Engineer Stu Jacobs. Assistant to the producer Jim Cook. Technical consultant Peter Skye. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen. And so, until next week, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for our next adventure, Death Song, from the elsewhere and elsewhen of Alien Worlds. <laughs>